Hello everyone. Here I am going to attempt to summarize the idea of hiding under cover in the sense of the cover of clandestine activities or otherwise criminal actions. And of course, naturally, the primary motive to doing things undercover and clandestinely, at least today, is to get away with criminal activity and conspiracy. Of course, the conspiracy that we're talking about here is not just some sort of petty ring of people, but rather it's a, well, actually it is a petty ring of people. Essentially, you have groups of individuals, of which there are really not that many, who collude together for their own ends and the ends of that group. And the primary purpose for a lot of propaganda today and a lot of misdirection has to do with the creation of a cover for their clandestine crime. One of the main scenarios that we see today, which is geared towards providing cover for the international component of these criminal organizations or the main overarching criminal organization called the Union, of which I did a video on that particular topic. Well, the illegal alien and quote illegal immigration scheme the primary purpose for it is to provide cover for foreign agents. You see, the so-called immigration system of today, which imparts the structure of the visa, well, the idea is that you have a group of individuals who are paid to deny or disparage certain individuals from traveling for completely arbitrary reasons. Naturally, this makes people who are freedom-minded, well, they're not going to let that fly, and so they, they will do it anyway. This issue is overblown, and the issue of people traveling without a visa is pointed to as the primary crime as far as immigration goes, but it's not. The reason why it's pointed to as a primary crime is because it diverts people's attention away from the criminals that are in their midst operating as foreign agents on behalf of foreign entities such as the United Nations, the European Union, the Vatican, and other such groups, of course, the main overall union, which I'm not entirely sure that the union is exactly, generally speaking, an open entity, whereas we're all very well aware of the UN the European Union and the Vatican, right? You have people in the United States specifically, especially like bar card holders, uh, lawyers, and many other individuals that are working with international conglomerates against the interests of the nation and the country that they're living in. That is the very definition of a foreign agent. Even if they're registered as foreign agents, that is a foreign agent. That is somebody who is working against, working on behalf of foreign interests against the interest uh, domestically, against the domestic interests, right? So they want people to never realize this. Hence, they need to continuously harp on the so-called issues at the southern border and the crimes of people traveling without a pass or passport or visa, any of these things. Obviously, if you look further into this subject, as I did in previous videos, you will find that the visa system is essentially speaking a business. There are stakeholders. Those stakeholders turn a profit from this visa business and this immigration business. There is a monetary stake at it. But the main and primary focus of the illegal immigration facade is to construct a cover for the foreign agents that are working against the people that they're living next door to. They want you to be afraid of people passing the border. They want you to be afraid of people who are traveling without permission in the visa, and they want you to be afraid of people that are undocumented because they themselves are foreign agents 
And as long as you're constantly looking for an issue that they created, then you'll never be looking at them for what they really are. If you look at it a different way, in the 30s, 1930s, this is the time period when the so-called Customs and Border Protection Agency was erected. The primary goal of this entity, as it was reported, was to ensure that no foreign forces were able to invade. Except what they ended up doing instead is they brought in the their friends, right? They brought in Nazis and they brought in other corrupt international entities. They brought in agents of the UN established by a prominent political member of the Belgian Socialist Workers Party, which is in definition a Nazi in, in every way possible. And they basically took the guise of protecting the borders from invasion and did exactly that. The border, Customs and Border Protection, the Immigration Service, the or the United States Immigration Service, uh, USCIS, United States Customs and Immigration Service, and then we also have the uh, Customs and Border Protection, CBP, and of course we have the Department of Homeland Security, and we have the uh, immigration control enforcement, right? All of these entities, the only thing they do is go around harassing people and abusing them under the name of protecting the U.S. citizenry from invasion while they themselves are perpetuating exactly that. They bring in foreign agents and those foreign agents collect everything and they take all of our resources they rape the United States of all things human or otherwise uh, value, land value. They take treasures of historical and cultural significance. They steal technology. They steal everything. And these people, they all work within these so-called governmental sectors against the interests of U.S. citizens as a whole against the interests of the nation. They are enemies of the people because everything they do has to do with the promulgation of and propagation of foreign interests. Hence the whole idea of, of America being first. They don't like that. They freak out completely when they hear that. And it's interesting that you have a lot of people that talk about America first agenda but then they'll harp on this illegal immigration thing and perfectly assist in providing cover to all the foreign agents still operating in the United States under cover color of law. And they're using this cover that they, they themselves made, right? They made the visa system in the 1930s. They made these harassing agencies that abuse everyone that crosses their path. They made the issue that we see today. They made illegal immigration. They made all of this stuff. It did not exist before, and the nation of the United States was perfectly fine before the 1930s. We weren't invaded. It's, it's, it's quite remarkable, really, because the people that made this stuff continue to operate and continue to sell out all U.S. citizens, everyone, in the interests of foreign adversaries. That is the very definition of espionage. In many cases, it's treason, but it's certainly acts of war, or they are certainly acts of war. And yet, you have apparently people who, who believe and profess that their interests have to do with the defense of the nation, and yet they prefer to look at the fake problem of illegal immigration, and they don't want to look at the true problem of foreign operatives operating in broad daylight. So that's the first cover we've got. Illegal immigration is a cover for foreign agents. That's it. That's the only thing. There is no illegal immigration problem. It doesn't exist. It's a lie. The problem that they made is them. They are the problem. The people who made the visa system, the people who made these so-called border protection, and the people who continue to make these issues today 
under the pretend guise of being so-called law enforcement or any of these other nonsensical titles they like to give themselves. Well, they're doing the exact opposite. They either have to be removed or they will continue selling everyone out until there's nothing left to sell, basically. That's it. They have to be removed or, or we're done. That's it. There's, there's no two ways about it. That's period. There is no issue with people traveling across the border. There is no issue with people traveling via plane. The only issue, and has only ever been the issue, is the large number of foreign agents operating inside of the United States with the blessing of our alleged government entities. So let's get into the next cover that they need to use to get away with their crime. Of course, if we're going to go to the basis of this, the first level of cover that was created was the catechism or the Roman Catholic dogma sort of church doctrine, right? We see this replicated in pretty much every church globally as a part of what the Vatican calls the universal church. And what they do is they teach behaviors, right? They teach habit. They teach that something is a sin and you must not do it. And if you do do it, then they'll punish you for it. Right? It's, it's completely different from teaching somebody that you shouldn't touch the touch of uh, a candle, right? A fire on a candle or something like that, or a hot stove. And then they do it anyway, and they burn themselves. And then you say, well, that was the reason why you weren't supposed to do that. That's the consequence you get. That's not the way these people do it. They do it where you're not supposed to do something. The reason you're not supposed to do something is because they told you so. And if you do it, then they will punish you. That is the very definition of a tyrant. Right? They're, they are establishing rules and laws that have only at the basis their control. So that comes directly from the Roman Catholic dogma and has to do entirely with behavioral habit. And so you have all these people that run around doing, um, doing rituals and customs and ceremonies without perfectly understanding why they were doing them in the first place. One of the examples of this is that the overall emphasis on saints that were priests or monks at one point. And you have a warrior saint called St. George, who is alleged to have slain a dragon that was uh, ironically extorting people of money and then of their living beings. And that dragon sounds a lot like the so-called beast that the corrupt people in their religious circles constantly harp about. However, that saint you will not find in any cathedral church or any sort of sphere that is controlled by the Vatican. They dislike, in all cases, martial valor, nobility of character, and the habit of being honorable. That's because they themselves are cowards, they're not honorable, and they want to completely diminish any example of people living a chivalric sort of life. And so naturally they also marginalize the knights of old, where they state that there, were, it never, there was never any chivalry and there, there was never any chivalrous uh, conduct or activity. And you go around to the armed forces today and you find a lot of people, they lack chivalry, but that doesn't mean you cannot find individuals that actually live through honorable, an honorable personal code, a lifestyle that they have adopted themselves. And it requires independent thought to set something like that up because these people, they propagate the idea that because chivalry has never existed and because it's so-called chivalry is dead, that stupid phrase they repeat all the time, well, then that means that you shouldn't be honorable, you shouldn't be chivalrous, and you shouldn't do anything. And you shouldn't have a word that is truthful. You should not be somebody who can be trusted and is dependable. So naturally, the whole scope of religious, organized religion uh, subverting habit and behavior that as at the base of it the establishment of cover so that way people will go around and get angry and mad and they will look to the followers the ignorant followers as the problem but they're not because this scheme is all built around the concepts of a cult where a cult sets up individuals with ignorance and habit of behavior which all is 
built around the protective buffer of the corrupt leadership, right? The, everybody knows that in a cult, the real problem is the corrupt leadership, not the people that are easily swayed by the corrupt leadership. Except in many cases, it's not easy actually to sway people. But considering people nowadays are made susceptible to cults, it's not no surprise that most of these things take on the that nature of a cult. Feminism is a, another version of this, where originally starting out, the Red Hand movement had to do with children that were being abducted and disappearing. Naturally, the feminist movement is entirely built around the guise of providing cover. Well, it's not around the guise, but it, it's built around providing a guise, a disguise or cover for the criminals, but with a, a woman is all that matters sort of element to it where they can completely remove the male figure from the equation. The martial valor that comes with the symbol of a masculine figure, they don't want that. Naturally, the feminist movement adopted the red hand thing as violence against women so that they could obfuscate the true problem of child abductions that are perpetuated by the corrupt that run our state. They are the ones that, ha that steal children and they steal everything they can. It doesn't matter what it is. That's the main point of this. The corrupt people, they have no loyalty. They have no belief system. The only thing that they want is domination and control that they perpetuate. That's the only thing they want. They will acquire any mantle, any disguise, any object, any technology, anything that allows them to achieve those ends. So they don't care about the feminists. They do not care about Catholics. They do not care about Protestants. And they do not care about illegal aliens, immigrants, or virtually anyone else. The only things they care about are those objects and situations and items they control, which allow them to retain their control, and of course expand it. And we find replications of this everywhere where the appearance of something is what's important, not the actual content, or the, the perception of something is paramount to actually being that something, or having a established track record of being that something. The appearance is important because they themselves are frauds, right? The corrupt people, they don't believe in anything. And so naturally, any, they group, any group that they join and take over, usually, well, they don't have any loyalty to that group, so that makes them a fraud. They can be found out when put up next to the genuine article, so naturally they have to propagate this endless concept of appearing to be something as being of utmost importance. And actually have all these frauds that are being exposed today because of that. But a lot of the frauds that are being exposed are essentially offerings so that the corrupt people can retain their control. As always, they will perpetuate and propagate facades to provide themselves cover. And it, a person has to look past those by following the patterns and finding out who is establishing these facades. Who's the one that's instigating the facade but not just who's the one instigating a facade, but rather who's the one instigating the overall facade. That's the trick. That's what you need to find. That is your corrupt person that's establishing a disguise or a cover for illegal or for criminal conduct. Felonious, villainous, whatever you want to call it. Something that these people will do a lot is they will construct entities that run parallel to the legitimate and in that way, they can get away with crimes in the name of someone else, and that someone else is castigated for the crimes they perpetuated. Another way to say that, of course, is identity theft, right? You got the classic example of somebody stealing someone's identity, and then going around and robbing banks or, or stealing money, and then that person who had their identity stolen, well, they're the ones that are castigated for the identity theft or for the actions that the individual that stole the identity would do. But there's many ways that this happens. They will steal author names. They will 
edit books, edit the original author's intent out of a book, and of course they'll construct copies, many copies, of an individual burying that individual in a sea of fraud. So that's a very uh, interesting tactic, but the main thing about it is that they can use all of these facades and fakery and parallel structures to get away with their crimes and make sure the liability is pushed onto someone else. And of course the root of it always has to do with the shifting of liability. If you find somebody who's constantly trying to shift liability, not somebody who takes responsibility for actions unnecessarily, right? If you're dealing with these adversaries, often the taking responsibility is an opening for them to shift the liability of all things onto you, right? If you mention responsibility for one thing, they will state, oh, well, you did, you admitted to this one thing, so you must have done all these other things. That, obviously, is a corrupt person who is attempting to hide their own crimes, and they're usually culpable for many things. Uh, in a previous video, I covered the whole idea of the LGBTQ plus being a cover for the juridic scheme, juridical scheme. That plus has to do with juridic entities. And a lot of things have to do with juridic entities, but the main takeaway from that is that these juridic entities, their entire purpose is yet another layer. It's another facade and it's another cover for the criminals to hide because within these companies they commit crimes in the name of quote uh, the uh, company team right they don't pin their name to the actions they're taking that is willful and culpable conduct it might not necessarily be part of a conspiracy but it usually is and it allows them to get away with criminal activity and not to be held personally accountable that is the main objective here. Individuals need to start be, being held personally accountable for their individual actions, regardless of what position they're in. And naturally, they don't want that happening, so within their sandbox system, they constantly construct all these different ways to shift liability or completely absolve themselves of liability. Within the system they've constructed, you will not get justice against them. It has to be done, so to speak, outside of the system. It has to, individuals need to be held accountable by other individuals, and that requires a collective of individuals to form, to hold accountable those that are perpetuating these heinous, expansive, and conspiratorial crimes against everyone. And naturally, actions are not the only thing that requires a cover. Movement of resources is a primary area that requires cover to it. One of the most obvious methods that they construct to provide themselves cover for for the movement of resources is the donation scheme. You will have people who are completely ignorant or possibly partially ignorant. Either way, anybody who provides donation to a juridic entity, one way or another, they are providing resource of legitimacy, which then allows the criminals to put their illegitimately gained resources into the pot, right? That's the classic money laundering scheme. Or the washing of money. You take legitimate money in a business and then you mix in a little bit of otherwise attained funds. You can do this with more than just money. You can do this with artifacts of antiquity, you could take something that has extremely important value that was stolen from somewhere, and you mix it in with a bunch of other antiques, and nobody would know the difference. This, I guarantee, is happening throughout the world still and constantly in different places, and it's just hidden in plain sight. Of course, nonprofits provide a primary example of this intent to provide cover for the movement of resources and with this concept I covered this in my previous video where I talked about how nonprofits provide a vehicle for court settlements of trust and then this gets of course into the trust funds and all of these words have been subverted 
where trust originally might have meant that two people who trust each other, well, they form a pact and they write it down on paper and it is based around the trust. That's the only plausible reason why these things would be called trust funds because nowadays most trust funds have no trust in them. The only trust that is constructed through these things is the fact that the individuals throughout the globe continue to let these other individuals get away with their crimes. And that's it. That's the only sense of trust. But I highly doubt many people today really respect the trust of trust funds because it's not being used the way it was originally intended. Naturally, people who are so-called trust fund babies or trust fund kids or any of these other things, usually they don't respect the money that is being provided to them because that money was being, that those resources aren't theirs to begin with. And they, that's sort of the same idea of if an animal lives with a certain individual and that animal is ill-tempered and ill-behaved, it's likely because they learn that from the person they're living with. Same with children. Children will reflect the parents. If you have a badly behaved child, it is because of the parents one way or another. And that's the same thing here. If you have people that run around and they have zero respect for the value of resources and they squander things without regard, it's usually because they learn that somewhere and that they don't hold value in these things because it wasn't theirs. They didn't actually acquire it. If you take family heirlooms, for example, a lot of people in families, maybe not so much today now because of all of the uh, brainwashing in the school system, but a lot of families in the past anyway, they kept heirlooms within their family. And that tells you that the people in the family, subsequent, subsequent generations, they valued that object. Otherwise, it wouldn't be a family heirloom. And of course, this gets into the idea of language manipulation. One of the primary of all things, the primary element that provides the most expansive cover for these criminal conspiracies of conduct, the primary hiding material that they make is the subversion of language. That cannot be destroyed. Otherwise, it will become far too easy to identify them for their fraud that they are. They are fraud. They are lies. They are theft. They are murder. It is much easier to identify them once you understand words, the intent behind those words, and the history of those words. This particular subject is not covered in this way of identifying the fraud, but the idea of history in English words was talked about by Owen Barfield, one of the members of the Inklings group, the alleged Inklings group anyway. But that book talks a lot about looking through the history of words to find history itself. And you're not looking through the history of words, say the etymology or anything like that. You're simply looking at patterns that appear with words, such as the words authority, authorized, authorizer, and author authoritarian, right? Nowadays, if you look up these definitions, they will always give you one-sided, incomplete, and rudimentary definitions. If you look up the definition of authority, you will find that it states something similar to relates to law or the power and legitimacy to do things to people, right? That's a tyrant. That is not what authority actually means but yes, it does relate to that. That's the idea of an incomplete definition. Notice, at the base of all of these words is the word author. Now, there's something weird going on here where you have the name Arthur, or Arthur, and author is spelled A-T-H-O-R, similar to Hathor, the Egyptian god. However, it's pronounced arth or author, like Arthur, right? A R T H U R. Technically, author should probably be spelled A U T H U R. Either way, the word author has to do with published work. Something that is authorized is something that has been published. You can have something that is authorized 
or published by the United Nations conventions and charters and all this other garbage, which runs completely counter to the authorized, as in published, work of the U.S. Constitution. And here we get this idea of something being authorized or being authored, something that is being published. That gets into the idea of authorial intent versus an author's intent. Very few people actually understand how these words work, and I don't completely understand them myself. You cannot find any assistance with the online systems. And the reason for that is because the online systems have been warped to provide yet another cover for criminals. Currently today, everything just about is run by criminals, and naturally all things that we hold as prominent resources or otherwise today, all of those things, their entire purpose today it might not have been originally like that, just like with language, but either way today it is used to provide cover for criminals. And in order for these things to get fixed, individuals will need to start understanding that the only way to fix it is to find the source, find the criminals, the willful misconduct and malfeasance that they are taking part in, establish state of mind or mens rea, and you will understand that that individual themselves is a fraud and has been identified and marked for proper liability accounting and subsequent addressing, right? Not only do, does their liability have to be accounted for, but it also has to be addressed. Meaning, in some way, they need to be fixed. That doesn't have to do necessarily with punishment. It has to be fixed. See, once you identify a criminal, you can often use them to the advantage of discovering and uncovering other criminals that, technically speaking, would be a way to fix the situation. However, that comes with its own issues as well, especially considering these people, their entire existence is built around hiding and building facades, and naturally someone like that can't be trusted. Anyway, if you have enjoyed this video, please like it, share it, subscribe, check out my other content. There are free books available at the link and if you so desire, you may support my work on PayPal or Cash App. Thank you.